Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do a lovely simple landscape featuring some hot air balloons. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so we've masked off the edges of the paper to fix it down with some washi tape and I've just drawn a horizontal line sort of just about partly higher than the halfway line and a little one down here because I'm going to base this picture on a very famous um, Bristol balloon fiesta uh, in the UK. I grew up in Bristol and um, it has this very famous suspension bridge which I'm just going to mark in. If, you, if you've never heard of the Clifton Suspension Bridge, do Google it because it is quite amazing. Um, and it goes across a, a gorge, a river in Bristol. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to sort of mark in some, just a wobbly line of landscape. And that's gonna be quite enough and then the river sort of travels down okay and that's all we need because we the landscape is really um, the the secondary thing because we're going to put some balloons some hot air balloons in the sky so to draw a hot air balloon um, and I'm just going to place them sort of all over the place but we're going to have a few larger ones really sort of dominating the painting. We need a nice sort of round bulbous top that comes in to a point at the bottom. And you can sort of sketch this out nicely. Um, there are all sorts of um, sort of novelty shaped balloons these days but I'm going to stick to something fairly classic um, and I'm just going to draw in a few larger ones which are going to be the dominant sort of more crisp balloons on the piece. But we're also going to have plenty of smaller ones off in the distance. And those will be achieved by actually painting onto a wet landscape that we're going to paint in first. So I'm just gonna get some of my key balloons drawn in and then we'll start painting. So my piece of paper is um, eight inches across by six inches down, if anyone likes to know. And I'm now gonna use my mop brush to just wet the page entirely. This mop brush is brilliant for just holding plenty of water and allowing you to just cover your page with a lovely coat of water. When you're wetting a page like this, ready to do nice sort of bleeds and blends, um, the mop is brilliant because it's not going to leave big puddles of water on the page. You just want the most even coverage going. Um, so these mop brushes, um, I sell this exact brush in my shop if you ever want to get yourself one. But we're moving on now and we're going to start putting in a bit of sky and background. So I'm going to work fairly fast. So it means I've already added water and woken up the paints that I want to use. So I've got a size eight brush here and some Prussian blue and I am just placing in some sky and you can see that I'm painting it in in a rather sort of uneven manner to achieve a bit of white in the sky creates a few clouds and I'm also not worrying about painting over the top of the pencil drawing at this point because it's all very faint but I am just focusing in on the sort of the sky area. And then I can come down into the water where we can have a lot of the same color. because so of course the water is going to be largely a reflection of the sky. However, we've then got, uh, on this side I'm gonna have a slightly sort of browner, slightly more industrial feel of a, a harbor coming in. That's just with some burnt sienna there. So therefore that brown will creep into the actual water tone there. Um, on this side, we've got a bit more of a sort of tree lined area. So I'm just using a bit of sap green with Payne's Gray. 
And remember that, of course, all of this is very much the supporting act to our, our balloons. So I'm not being too precise with it. Because, of course, this is all going to bleed beautifully in and sort of just soften and become a nice gentle background. So on this side I'm just going to play around with a few lines and shapes. We've still got a few sort of trees and craggy rocks in the background here but focusing on the muted grey tones, using Payne's Grey, adding your Payne's Grey into all sorts of colours just gives you a nice interesting sort of backdrop upon which to do some painting and you must sort of have an eye on the drying speed of your piece because we want to keep everything bleeding nicely in and I will also add just a little bit of colour to my suspension bridge and then I get the rigger brush here, the long slender bristled brush with a bit of Payne's Grey and add in the suspension line. That's what a suspension bridge means if you're unfamiliar with the term. It's, it's held together by suspension. Right. The next thing I want to do, whilst it's still a little bit damp, is paint in one or two distant hot air balloons. Now you can see how this colour's travelled quite far, and that's great, that's what we want really for this. But my hot air balloons, I want to be just the tiniest bit more um, clear and crisp in the sky. So as I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm sort of allowing the paint to dry just that little bit more and I can start thinking about some colours that I want. Oh, I can start to hear the rain outside. Goodness me, the weather is changing. Not on, Only like two weeks ago, I think I was talking about painting in a heat wave and all the things you need to do <laughs> to make sure your paint doesn't dry too fast. And now we've almost got the opposite problem. So when we're painting distant um, items, we, I've already sort of mentioned how colour is much more muted, faded, it shrinks away. Well, that's also going to be the case for hot air balloons off in the distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place literally blobs of colour at this stage. Just using a, a red at the moment mixed with a tiny bit of Payne's Grey. And you can see these are just fading off into nothing, which is pretty much what we want at this stage because we can come back in and paint in a little bit more on them. Um, I might do a different colour, I'll choose a, a yellowy green. But yeah, at this point, tiny blobs in the sky. This is exactly what we want. Seems like a strange thing to be painting, but just nice and faded. A little different colour there. Uh, pop one up there, just to make sure they are smaller than any that you've actually drawn in. Don't worry if it's gone like that, that's absolutely fine, because what we'll be doing is just building up and shaping those very, very faded colours as we go. But we want to get in that slightly softened, distant, not very refined or defined balloon shape in the air. So all of this needs to happen whilst your paint is still a little bit wet and then we can just give it a little bit more drying time now and then we can move into creating some slightly more defined shapes. Now I've let the page dry what I'm doing is I'm going back into these distant hot air balloons with a size 4 tenths brush using the colour that I painted the original blob with and doing a little outline one side a little bit more colorful sort of choosing a, a slightly stronger color and just defining the shape a little bit 
and then just popping in a few ridges but nothing too strong because we've got to remember these ones are still our distant little balloons and then just a little dab at the bottom so I'll try this one here So the Balloon Fiesta in Bristol was a big moment for the city and still is, it continues to, you can still go it's every August and in fact that's kind of nice timing for why I'm painting it today. Um, and honestly the air is filled with balloons, you would have to believe it to see it, or see it to believe it. <laughs> so I'm just adding in... You just don't want to be too detailed with it, especially these ones off in the distance. So I'm just going to fill in the rest of the ones. Remember this one? You can barely see it now, can you? So I'm going to make sure that my watercolour shaping is also quite, quite faint and distant. don't need much colour at all and it's just a case of being really really sparing with the amount of colour that you put on your brush. I um, always say have a little bit of scrap paper to one side. If you're a little bit unconfident at how much colour you are expecting the brush to have on it when you when you come to put it on the page and have a little bit of scrap paper to one side and just test it out on that page before you put it on the page of your painting. Now I'm looking at the balloons in the foreground and I've um, just with a pencil found the sort of roughly the center point and then I am drawing in very faintly the segments of the hot air balloon. They're going to get just a little bit narrower, just a little bit as we go towards the edge of the balloon and then of course the other side. This is going to help us paint just a slightly more detailed kind of shape. So whether you want to do a, a, a balloon that might be all one colour. We'll try one of those first. Um, I've got a size zero brush here and uh, I'm going to try Alizar in Crimson, quite f faint and faded first. Just sort of painting in down along the lines. Then I'm going to get a little bit more whilst it's still wet. Then I'm going to take my smaller brush, my four tenths, and I'm going to slowly bring in a bit more concentrated colour. And we're still just sort of working quite wet, allowing a little bit of unpainted space to just create a little bit of light and shade and a little bit more colour. It's because when we're working quite small, even though we made this, the shape a bit wet at first, it, it'll dry out really rather fast. A 
allowing us to just keep on going back in. And just gently creating more uh, shape and texture. If you want to create a bit of a pattern on it, then you can just use your pencil to mark out what you want to pop on. Remember about the roundness of the balloon. And then when we're placing in these colours, uh, what colour should I go for? I'll go for, I'll go for a turquoise actually. Um, of course we've still got the, the ridges of the balloon, so at this point it's not just a case of drawing that line as a straight line because it's got all these little bumps in it as well. And then we can just draw the colour down. down at the bottom there. It's quite nice to take a bit more of the concentrated colour and sort of have it send it back up I suppose. So for this one here I'm going to try some stripes. So I've got my size zero brush and some cadmium orange and I'm going to travel down one of the sections And then I'm going to paint in all the alternating ones. Just still keeping it quite nice and dilute. And then we can always drop in a little bit of stronger colour. Sort of on the one side of the stripe, if you see what I mean to give the sense of the, the light hitting one side and the shadow just bouncing off the other. I think the big challenge with hot air balloons is getting that, um, there are so many so many different facets to the hot air balloon, all the little ridges that are inflated with air and how the light and shade bounces off them all. And then of course the top of the balloon versus the bottom of the balloon. Um, but you can see just by adding a little bit more colour into the base there, we get a bit more colour on those. And then you can either leave the other stripes plain or you can add a, another colour. and. Um, I'm just going down one size of the brush just to get a bit more control with some cadmium red. You can have all kinds of fun with it. Um, I think the important thing is just to try and keep a mind on like the shape of the balloon and 
the roundness and also remembering that the balloons further off in the distance the colors need to be just that little bit more faint and um, and less defined Okay, so then the other key thing for a balloon is its basket. And if I take some Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna, then we can create a nice sort of dark shadowy brown where I can just sort of extend the balloon down. It might be lower than sort of what you painted in initially and just a little sort of extra sort of cone on the base of the balloon it extends down a little bit further and then just a few brush strokes to create a little basket. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna look at the piece as a whole. So I'm now turning my attention back to the background and I'm just using a size 2 brush to paint in some still very dilute but now we're on a dry page it means that it is just standing up a bit more. Um, I've got the Payne's Grey mixture and as I said very dilute still and I'm just using the size 2 brush to start sort of scrubbing in a little bit more of the detail in the distance. Um, the suspension bridge also has uh, spokes coming down but we're not going to do all of them but just a little bit of a sweep of the brush like that. And I can now take that nice sort of fairly faded colour that we used on the uh, on the landscape here, add a bit of that in as well and again it's on a dry page now so we can start to just use the brush for the tiniest bit of some texture but you can see it's still very faint and, and we're just getting the gentlest hints of detail and that's what we want really and we're sort of fully accepting of the sort of softened bleed from the previous layer that works really nicely to be honest I'm really pleased with that so I'm just looking at the sort of most distant horizon line at this point and also just down there in the water start to build up just a bit more interest in the water as well so that's still using the very dilute Payne's Grey mixture and on the dry page using my size 2 brush angled low to the page to get these nice sweeps and just trying to be as fluid and confident with the brush as possible being quite fast in the way I'm placing the paint on the page. I'm going to get a bit more of this Payne's Grey mixture and a bit of the green in there as well and I'm now going to just use a little bit more of a concentrated amount to come down on this hill here 
and then I clean my brush off and just come in underneath it to create that and then just a little bit of a, a watered down bit of colour there. And then I'm going to take a bit more and just do it here as well. So you see, it's a very simple little technique of building up layers slowly using the tiny bits of unpainted space just in here and there to create a bit of texture. But really it's nothing too strong because our focus is the balloons. And that's what you have to sort of make a decision on when you are creating a composition is, is what is the focus and even if we do strong colours down in the foreground the detail is nowhere near that balloon just there On the other side here was some sort of uh, various sort of industrial bits and buildings and all I'm doing is just playing around with, with basic shapes with a little bit more brown and really yeah just, just keeping my brush quite sort of uh, on an axis of, of up and down and then in behind or a few trees and things, but this is just a good example to show you sort of how you can create a sense of sort of landscape and things with really not not very much. If you're coming down into the foreground, remember you can always add a little bit more colour. And also just framing the piece from the edges as well. Just getting a little bit more colour in there. Because remember when we sort of peel off the, the tape from the sides, there's going to be a lovely crisp edge. Remember your, your water is largely reflective of what is up to the sides from it, so keep being mindful of, of, of that. But as you can see, it's a very sort of loose piece. Another real sort of introductory approach to landscape painting. So we've got this real contrast, haven't we, between the balloons up there and the landscape down here and one thing that we can do to really bring the two together is actually have a bit more of a shadow on these balloons. We've talked about how you can create the roundness of the shape by having some sort of lighter colours and bits of light bouncing off them but if I also create that shade and shadow it really helps place them in the space. So on one hand, I'm just using my brush to sweep the colour over the side. And then as it comes round to the middle, being a bit more specific with that colour. And then even the ones in the distance And what's lovely is this painting has given me wonderful memories of my time in Bristol. 
it's a very special place for me. And I also want to dedicate the memory of this painting, the painting to the memory of Vaishali Jethwa, a school friend of mine who we've recently lost. So there we have a painting of hot air balloons that just happen to be floating above the Bristol Suspension Bridge, a place very close to my heart. Ooh, and that's taken the paintbrush with it. Let's peel that last one off. And there is your hot air balloon painting. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it. And I'll see you again next time. Bye.